Well, this came from India, so let's open it up. Just slide for an ergo button. It was protected with some uh, pretty heavy duty cardboard here. And, uh, let's inspect the condition. Make sure the slide's okay. Sometimes they get bent. Sometimes they don't. Now the individual that sent this has some skills and they were able to get the button off. By the way, you might be wondering why it is that a slide has a slight curvature. They're made from roll stock, steel roll stock of 8 foot to 12 foot diameter, or not 12 foot, more like 6 or 7, but so it's from a roll that's curved, and that's why they're curved. Of course, this is the nub here. Now, let's get started here. The first task is, this is the bar stock here. It's aluminum, and of course, this is the lathe. The first thing I gotta do is I gotta get a hole back here that'll fit over this nub. And that fit has to be pretty much perfect. To hold it on, I don't really want. I, I want it pretty stable, even without glue, and then the glue will just hold it on from wiggling side to side. So anyhow, the uh, first step here in this process is to uh, go ahead and lock it up. Okay, I'm gonna let's see. Make sure you can see what I'm doing here. You can pretty good. I'm going to put in a, a little pin here, and I'm just going to come up and whack right into this aluminum. Now what that does is it puts a dimple in it, puts a dimple here, and when I use the drill bit here, it won't travel. If I didn't do this, then uh, the, the drill bit would travel. So we're going to come in a little closer here so you can see real well what I'm doing here. Okay, and then what I do is just come in and I'm cutting like that. And let's just take a look and see how close does this fit right now. Got a ways to go. Now that's what I can do with the bit automatically. The rest I got to do by hand now. So I'm going to back this off to free it at this end. Come over and cut it by hand now. Just with hand pressure. So I'm pushing this drill bit right into that metal. It's actually a difficult part of the job, believe it or not, is this. <clears throat> there we go. Gotta have it free. That's interesting. Okay, is it absolutely flush? Now, see it's got to be 
absolutely flush onto there. Absolutely flush. If it's not, then it won't seat. The, the button's supposed to seat on the shoulder. So I just want to make sure that this is correct. This is one of those things where you're always hopeful you've gone far enough. But to find out if you have, you come in with a light like that and see that I have. So that means now that I have a hole in the back end that will uh, go under the time. And now we're ready to start cutting. And I'm going to cut here. So I guess you can be right like this. Okay, here we go. Isn't that beautiful? It is kind of fun, isn't it? I'm doing this by hand. There's no templates or anything else. I've just done it enough times where I know the feel of it. So I'm turning both of them at the same time to create a beautiful, smooth shape. Now, the shoulder of this needs to be, the shoulder of the slide has to be about that outer diameter there to make a nice shape. I just got to be aware of that issue as I keep cutting and not take off too much. I think that's enough. Let's take a look here. That is perfect. Okay, <clears throat> now I'm going to come in and start working the back part of See this part here is where the hand will go when it hits the button. So I'm going to come in and start to shape that now. I'm cutting this far because I've got to have room to come in and cut it off and work it. So I'll create some space here, see. This isn't the button, but it needs to be carved out for me to get to that other portion. And now I can really start to cut. So what does a lathe do? It applies a tremendous cutting pressure to a very small area. This tool is very sharp and it's hand shaped to do this particular job. And you can see if you come over here, how it's uh, long here and come in like this. And now the next thing I've got to do, you can see it's a button at the end on the right, correct? Alright, now I have to reset the cutting tool. So, I'll come over here grab my wrench. What I'm doing is changing the angle of the cutting tool right now because I'm going to start uh, shaping the back end here and I have to get in at a little better angle to do it. See, because i got to come in now and catch it. So I'm going to come in starting to create that back end shape. Okay, now not looking bad. I'm going to now bring it another angle further. As I start to get prepared to cut it off, I'm not anywhere near there yet, but I'm getting, getting ready. 
So I'm coming in now. I've got to get this back end flatter. It's got too much curvature like that on the back end. I got a little flatter. That's now prepared for cutoff. Now from here, I'll do it by hand. First thing I'm going to do is use this uh, cutting tool. This is a very old style method of working stuff. You do it by hand. And this is how I get the look I want. So I can get in here and smooth it. Smooth that angle. Come back here and start to smooth this. It's a nice button. Okay, now that went real well. It doesn't always go that well. It just kind of did. So I'm going to get me some 500. Paper. And I'm going to change your angle to here because this will all be hand done from here on out. The sandpaper. I want to come back and catch this back edge in here. And this is how I give it the look that I want it to have is by uh, working it with sandpaper. And you'll see it's starting to look beautiful and satiny. And so the question now is, does this have a shape to the hand that will be comfortable? And I think it will be once I cut it off. We'll be okay here. Coming here and coming here. It's got a little bit of a bump here, a little kind of a, a, a shape right here I like. It's a very pretty button. It's being made for a good friend of mine in India. And uh, it's going to be for a Seidel Saxony. See, it's starting to look pretty nice now, isn't it? I come in on the back side here. Like that. Get this as cleaned up as I can get it, because if whatever I don't do with the machine, I gotta do by hand once I cut this off. So I wanna take it as far as I can, and that completes as far as I'm going with 500. Now I'm gonna move up to 1,000, finish it up. There's a lot of handwork in one of these, really no way to beat it if you wanna make them by hand, you know, custom for each individual. This will be a very comfortable button for him on his Seidel Saxony, which I believe is an orchestra tune. It's the one I used to play when I was on Seidel. Come around to the back end again. Alright, now if I come in here with this rag, and I spin it down, you'll pretty much see what we got. That is the button. Okay, now the next thing is, I gotta get this button off. And then I'm gonna have to uh, come in and um, smooth that back part where I cut it, because it's gonna have to be smoothed. So I'm gonna lift out my this cutting tool put in what's called a cutoff. Very, very different in its shape. It's designed to get in there and cut something off. It's not a shaping tool, it's a cutoff tool. Now I'm going to give it some negative angle. So I'm going to bring it in here, see about where I need to be, about like this. Okay. 
Now we're at the moment, we're going to cut this off. So I'm going to come in. I'm just going to take a look. I'm going to shape a little bit more here to the back. A little bit more. I'm going to need a little bit more angle on this. Like that. Now I'm cutting back in a little bit. I want this a little flatter back here for the player. There we go. Now I can get in here and really flatten this out prior to cut off. And then I'll come in back to the end shaping to get that the way I want it. Like that, so I don't have to work it too long. And I'll come in with the uh, 500 paper on this back end, back edge side here. Yeah, let's move that out. Looking good. And then come in with the 1000. Giving that back end a nice smooth feel. Okay. Okay. I'm ready for cut off now. So I can come in. Come in here. Right to here like this. Put my finger here. I'll just bring it in and cut it off. Angles off a little bit here. I have to bring this up just a little bit like that to do the cut off cleanly. Fortunately, this doesn't matter too much in terms of shaping. The fact that I had a little issue here is not the end of the world. I come in just right like that cut it right off. And so, that's what it looks like. Now I'll have to sand off that top bump, but that'll be the button. My next job right now is starting cleanup. I'll let you watch that as well. Coming in here. An 18 minute video, wow. Pull out the cutting tool. And that, put in the shaping tool. Like this. Try and line it up properly for a good cut. Right about like that. And then, let's see what we're doing. Let's do this one here. It's a very old system here, but it does work. I have no complaint with it. Let's see if we can get a cut off now. I gotta have a smooth end on this button, see, for the next job. So I'm gonna give this a little bit more angle this way. And I'm going to take it down just a bit. Let's see if I can get a nice cut off here. Yeah. So now I've got a nice flat surface to work on the next time I cut. And I'm going to go ahead and reset my bar stock so I'm ready to go for the next button, right like that. Just like this. Mm. Relax my pressure on the machine. Now all I have to do is clean everything. 
But the next step is to go down and clean up the back side of this button here, which I will do by hand with uh, a stone and then polish it out and be ready to paint.